Good evening, I'm Erica Bryant. Before we dive into those stories, let's get you caught up on the latest headlines. The state of North Carolina is sending $35 million to local health departments, part of the federal funding it received to combat COVID-19. Each county gets a minimum of 90,000. Counties with the highest populations and more COVID-19 cases will receive more funding. And that funding will be needed. A key model used by the White House predicts the U.S. could see more than 200,000 deaths by October. That's when a second wave is expected. Right now, 18 states, including the Carolinas, seeing an upward trend in newly reported cases. And mask mandates now being weighed across North Carolina. Today, Raleigh took steps toward its own mandate. Raleigh City Council passing a motion to give its mayor the power to mandate face coverings, but so far not clear on if and when she will. And as we mentioned moments ago, Mecklenburg County leaders debated what their options are for requiring masks. The support is there to pass a resolution, but there's a catch to all of this. Our Joe Bruno listened in on the debate tonight to explain why they support it and what is stopping them now from taking action. Joe. Erica, here is a would you rather for you. Would you rather be forced to wear a mask in public or would you rather go back to phase one with all of those restrictions and a stay at home order? County leaders think that the public would much rather keep away from those past restrictions and choose the mask instead. It's clear they want a mandate, but right now it's not clear if they'll be able to get one. For 18 straight days, Meck County has had triple digit COVID-19 cases. Hospitalizations are on the rise. The percent positive rate is up and social distancing is on the decline. COVID-19 is still here and leaders aren't sure whether people realize that. We are watching the heat go up and we're doing pretty much nothing about it. I would like to know what our strategy is uh, and maybe I'm missing it, but I just feel like we're all over the place. Commissioners feel like they are losing the messaging war. It's evident most of them want to mandate masks in the county. They say face coverings could prevent the state from having to go back in phases. If you don't want to turn back, you need to turn on wearing a mask. It's so simple to wear a mask. And it can prevent so many hardships in the future. It can prevent us from going backwards. Prevent people that we love getting sick. The county manager says she can't mandate masks across the county without the approval of its towns and cities. Commissioners ask staff for an official recommendation on whether everyone should be forced to wear one every time they leave their home. Health Director Gibby Harris warned, though, that the mandate isn't seeing dramatic success in other areas. What we found in a couple of counties that have required masks is there's no way to really enforce it, and they're not seeing that the requiring of mask wearing has made much difference in their communities. With flu season approaching, leaders want the public to slow the spread so hospitals continue to have capacity. I think people have it in their mind that we, we there's no there, that we're not ever going back. Like there's no situation that we would ever go back to stay at home. Well, a lot of debate there tonight, but uh, they seem to be on the same page. But this was not the only action taken around public health tonight, Joe. The leaders also declared racism as a public health crisis. Erica, they unanimously passed that resolution and they voted to send a copy of it to every single lawmaker and every single county commission in the state. The resolution reads in part that the Mecklenburg County Board of Commissioners believes that racism can form the basis for a public health crisis affecting our entire county and should be treated with the urgency and funding of a public health crisis. Looking at racism, racism in this way offers legislatures, health officials, and others an opportunity to analyze data and discuss how to dismantle or change problematic institutions. The health director says she is in favor of this resolution and looks forward to working with commissioners on how to provide resources that will help with it. Erica. All right, Joe, thank you. Covering a lot tonight. Uh, data from the Pew Research Center shows why it is important to declare racism a public health crisis. 
black women are four times more likely to die of pregnancy related complications than white women. Black men are more than twice as likely to be killed by police than white men. And the average life expectancy of African Americans is four years lower than the rest of the U.S. population. Now, more than 20 cities and counties across the U.S. have declared racism a public health crisis. Supporters say that designation is meant to spur changes in all sectors of government, not just law enforcement.